Patrol, can you slow down a little bit? They can come down at uh, 10 meters a minute. Roger. They paid out five meters? Yes. So <coughs> let's do five meters again, but let's tell them um, 10 meters a minute. So it should take five minutes to get there, two and a half minutes to get down. Wind control, can we pay out another five meters, but let's slow that down to about five meters a minute. 10 meters a minute. What What did I say? Did I say five? I thought you said five. Oh. Five meters at 10 meters, meters a minute. minute. Five meters at 10 meters a minute, sorry. I talk too much sometimes. 30 seconds. And I'll follow you down with a delta. Yes, please, 35 meter delta. I keep hitting the tether in, <laughs> tether up, <up-up. laughs> where is it? We could put a pedal on the winch. <laughs> <laughs> Another system I work with has auto delta, but well, I, I wouldn't you'll get one in December. You can use our pedals in December. Imagine that. How many uh, wraps do you leave on the drum? We get down to about half a drum. Yeah. Half a drum. Yeah. Nice. I like seeing bare drum on the TMS. Oh, it's, it's warm, fun. fuzzy. <laughs> Roger. We are now 20 some meters. Okay. Good for another five meters at whatever, same speed. Let's go another five meters, same speed. If I had done this before with this winch and these operators, I might be a little more uh, cavalier here, but I'm being... Uh, Better safe. Yeah, I don't trust Slow. those. Slow. Slow is fast. Don't trust those people on the deck. <laughs> hey, get them on our same comm system. Just talk to them. They are on the comm system. You can talk to the radio directly. I don't know if it's working. It doesn't, it's not working. It doesn't work. No. No. It used to. It used to. I mentioned that too. Uh, I don't know. I just like pushing the button. Roger. What do you say? Five meters paid out. Roger. So I'm 20 meters off. I still can't see the seabed. Let's come down another five. Yeah. Do you want to keep coming down? Uh, another five meters. Winch control, let's do another five meters. It's picking pretty fast. So what was your uh, thing, Dirk? You wanted to let it go when we were... You don't want to actually land it. You want to release it and let it drop? Yeah, we don't want to juggle it on the rocks. So ideally, we get as close to the bottom as possible so it's not tapping the bottom during the um, swell. Right. So as, once we find like a comfortable where it's a meter or two above at the lowest point, then we release it from there. Right. Yeah, the, the worst case is the acoustic release. Yeah falling into the stuff in the tool basket, so we don't want to overshoot. Yeah, totally. Roger. Good for another five. Let's do another five. Roger, My heading has only walked around a couple degrees. Yeah, I've been watching it. Thank you. <laughs> so it is rotating, right? And if you had gone over 15, I would have said something. Smack <laughs> me, Jake. Smack. North. North, you're happy, Eddie. Thank you.
Uh, All right, I can see the uh, bottom. I don't think you want to land it there. No. Uh, cables. Come down uh, three meters. Wind control, let's go down three meters. Okay, back row. I suggest we move this thing somewhere. I can't hear you. So the landing zone where it is there, I think south would be the place to get free of connectors. If we are looking, which, what's our heading right now? Based on the map that I have, south should be relatively free. Roger. I will, but it uh, might be easier for you to check with the... I will go explore a landing zone and then we'll give the vessel a range and bearing to move to. Yeah, okay. That's how we roll here. So we'll have an accurate range and bearing from our sonars. Yep, sounds good. Okay. I don't know why there's what's happening here. Yeah, I mean, we're right on our Yeah, we did scout marker. this earlier. So. I'll say it again, plus or minus 1% in the best of case. Mm -hmm. You're at Endeavor. It's not the best of case. <laughs> We'll give you a little bit of tether there, Dan. Yeah, uh, no, you can keep it tight. I'm coming back up under you. <coughs> you can actually oh, come up a bit. Here. I'm coming back toward you. Yep, no problem. I want to keep the tether tight. That's my biggest worry there. That's what I'm doing. So directly to the south appears to be a cable and a package. There's a package right under me. We can land it on all these bean bags under me. If you want. So we're quite far north of where we originally. So mm. weird. Okay. It's not weird. It's, it's you just cannot the way it is. rely on the beacons here. They're more of a guess. So. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. we checked it later on in the dive, and it did line up, but yeah, this is a different beacon, I guess, so. Wow, well, yeah. I don't know. Could it's be currents or anything. Right? Yeah, totally. The plume could have shifted, you know, the beacon could be yeah, going Yeah, it's also plume. reading a little bit different, because, like, Heading the ROV is in the shift. right on top of it, but it's reading about 10 meters away. Black yeah. magic. Digital black magic nowadays. So, uh, um, so you see... Um, there, here, I'll come down and Do we wanna give you a little peek at it. There's some, some bunch of, bunch of uh, bean bags and some instrument below me here. Yeah. Um, you know where you are yet? I have no idea. I think, if you just give me one second, we've got that two part instrument down here. What is that? Yeah, take your time. You got all just wanna make sure. I think this is into a connector. What's I'll uh, I'll come down and have a peek oh, at it. Oh, there's that bead bag area. So it looks like a seismo. It does, but I think it's just a pile of bead bags on a cable. Oh right, that's a big pile. Um, so east should be clear. Okay. Based on our maps. Okay. Stand by. We're gonna scout out east. Huh? Should I move or? You no, let me go have out. a look. I don't want to move the package unless I got eyes on it. So we'll go scout, and I'll like you know hover over a yeah, this move area, and then we'll, we'll try. Was here, but this is like 15, 20 meters south of the speed bag pile before our landing zone. But mm -hmm. yeah, so the cluster bags. That's where I thought we were going to land, but then it moved right over to our landing spot. So maybe we actually are there, but. It's reading. What we'll do, spot. Megan, is we'll try and hit the ROV with the package. So you're saying east? East, there's a there's a big area east that's clear. It's just where they're how... I always get those confused. I need to go that way, right? That yeah. way. Thank yeah, you. go to the right. Thank you, navigator. <laughs> Facing north, go right. I'm just going to slide east. around here, so... That's going to be painfully slow. So this is this end, dead end connector here that we're seeing right there. Yeah, the spot. 
Yeah, the spot. Uh, you would want to move the basket due east or southeast based on what you're seeing there? Um, east is east is good. Like like just... Okay, so in your screen, I guess, whatever's to the right is, is kind of clear. To the right of that cable, that's kind of the last thing in that area. Okay. This. So... Uh, how far east? Um, just so we're not landing on anything. So is it five meters? Yeah. Seven, um, eight meters? Let's that's make it ten. Ten? Okay. Yeah. There's a five meter footprint on this vessel and probably today, I don't know what our DP footprint is, but... Yeah, it's yeah. it's been kind of clumpy. Clumpy. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, you know, when we originally talked about a landing zone with the okay. grading, I think the grading is... Just off to the right. You can uh, let's move the ship. All right. Uh, Bridge uh, now. Yeah, you know what to do. Yeah, the train wheel yeah, and the yeah. grading. Yeah. So that's weird. So it must be. Let's the move ten meters in, zero nine zero. And then through every distorts everything through it. Thanks. What happened? You just pressed the button. You did. You scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be on that screen. I'm going to hang back here 10 meters away from it. I'll get a little get a little closer. To this. It's uh, relatively flat here. Or, or yeah, it's it's all relatively flat, but right, right. there's the yeah. package is 10 meters off the seabed, so it's not going to like swing. Oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 definitely. It's it's definitely. clear, clear for that. Okay. No it's just the seabed is a little pillowy. <laughs> it's just lumpy. Lumpy, lumpy and clumpy. That's what we got today. Uh, you should bark at me, Dirk. I want to see the package and I want to see the seabed all at the same time. <laughs> That's how we roll here. Parks. Park, yeah. Burr. Bus driver here. Uh, Pete, can you zoom in just a touch? No. OCD is that. Maybe out just a bit. So just what I'm after is that thing on the right side of the screen. Yeah. It has nothing to do with operations, only to do with my OCD. <laughs> ah, I walked 10 degrees, never even noticed. So, is anyone in here good at math? Well, what kind of math? Oh, what kind of math? So, somewhere you get the roll of the vessel right now. The roll? Yeah. So, say we're rolling, uh, I don't know, two degrees? Uh-huh. It's probably... My iPhone will tell you what that is. Well, it's constantly moving, changing, right? So, if the vessel is rolling... We have iPhones, we can tell that. Some uh -huh. amount of degrees. And that crane is sticking out like 100 meters off the starboard side. So if the vessel rolls two degrees... 100 meters? Well, it seems like a long way to me. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Longest crane ever. <laughs> 10 meters. All right. Something. One meter. <coughs> one meter. Yeah, one That's meter. more realistic. Yeah. 10. Stop it, Jake. Keep pressing that button. It's just, it's just the mute button. <laughs> no, you're pressing uh, PC5 here, and oh. for some reason it's on layout one. I'll, I'll change it here. Yeah, there's also the, uh, and then there's the swell that's uh, rolling. Oh, yeah, that's, that's yet roll another factor. Rolling, rock. So just with the roll and the distance of the crane, how far is the package going up and down? I think we'll, we won't have a good idea till we're seeing it, but it's... Oh, come on, Too many variables. Do the math. Do the math. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be as much as four meters. You're just winging it there. That's not impressed. I think Dan is not <laughs> on the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
There's yeah, absolutely very no way to know on a napkin calculation. You could just watch the Sonodyne uh, beacon and... Add 20%, 10%, 1% of water depth, so whatever that is. So We're only rolling a meter, a degree or two. We're not to really moving that much. Surprised we don't put an altimeter on that thing. Yeah, but you're going to have to go worst case with the ship rock and then that as a... Yeah, it'll be tough. Well, you can ignore some numbers, so <laughs> we're not heaving up and down a lot. Like the ship, we're not on a big, you know, uppy downy, but we have all those numbers right here in front of us. You have those at your fingertips on Grafana. Uh, I don't know. Inquiring minds want to know. I think what you can look at is your screen <laughs> and the top of your camera view, how much that changes if Herc's relatively stable. I can't. And then taking I'm that strop length of four feet. And then I'm fielding that. There. I'm fielding that question from the beach. He was max one meter. <laughs> I'm sitting watching at home, and I'm wondering <laughs> how much is that tool basket going up and down? <laughs> you find out when you get close to the bottom and bounces oh, off the bottom. That you will. So, are we? Do we have a? Do we? Do we request a ship move? Or yes, we did. We had moved okay. ten meters east. At this depth, it's going to be about ten minutes for it. Yeah, just settle. Okay. Yeah, we we started moving Amalanta. The package should be moving. Just. Uh, yeah, it's, I see. It's all going kind of in that direction now. It's going right over that bundle of cables. So perfect. It's much more fun when the basket's attached to the ROV and we're just hanging there, <laughs> <laughs> looking down. I'm taking all the notes so we can do two IO ops off the Kilo Moana. Don't take any <laughs> notes from this boat. There's no way they would let us do that. You know how awesome it would be, though? Why? You have a TMS. It's like you're the only science RV I know that has a TMS. You could do two wire ops all day. You can manage your tether. Where I come from, we chase this stuff up and down. They put it off, <coughs> they put it over the side of the ship. We acquire it at probably 50 meters and we chase it all the way down because they want eyes on the package the whole time. Millions of dollars. Well, off the, the way wire. we've always done it is just throw the stuff over the side, go find it, pick it up and move it. Yeah, they've been doing that since like the. Yeah, that's, that's fun because we have it on the uh, rhino horn and as we're moving up and down with it, we bounce it off the rhino horn. We do too. We put instrument packages under the vehicle and then we have this, looks like a, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Um, Symbols? Sea cucumber swimming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like coming up, bashing the ROV and then it gets all tangled up in the ROV. <coughs> Good. Great fun. It's looking a little better. I'm slowly moving for you, that stuff. Yeah, I could go have a little closer look here. We definitely, uh, Sorry, hope if I look down a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty, ro pretty rocky though. But yeah. I think we get what we get. Uh, well, I'd say you're going to be close to them cables there. Yeah. Uh, pretty lumpy. Pretty lumpy. back up a bit here, see if... Uh, I mean, it might perch well, but trying to land the RV near it and picking stuff might be hard. Yeah, yeah like hard. What's up? How about... Uh, it, so, I'm just going to drop down here and uh, I'll have a closer look so you can actually see. I'll go look under the package if you want, but I would... That's okay, Danny, I don't mind the tight to it. We're bouncing a little because I'm uh, um, tight. I'm just trying to keep you about 40, 42 meters. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's about as flat as pillows get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe this here, does this look reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. 
There's this here that doesn't look too bad. Well, let me come have a little closer look here. Oh, yeah, yeah. What you don't want is not being able to land the RV near it. That's the worst. Uh, come down five meters, Danny. Yep. Just landed on a tripod. Yeah, I know. I picked three big rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I know it looks. We've had this thing land pretty 45 before, and it's a real challenge to move stuff in and out of it. Yeah, and so and you're not going to set it down so you don't get a second chance? Yeah. Okay. But this Possibly this doesn't look, maybe if we, you know, I don't know. You like it over here better? I've Wherever, it's like, this looks all pretty iffy. Yeah, well, we can, I, I can go scout around for a better place if you want. I think so. I think time spent now is going to pay out huge. I'm going to try to fiddle with this and load it back up and all that. This looks fairly between like this area, but if it goes in there, we're done. Yeah, unless you actually land it, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah. You're basically dropping it and hoping for the best. And you don't get a second chance, so. Uh, based on my uh, other cameras there, um, it's a never. This looks like a flat, big flat rock, but maybe not. It all looks flat till you come down and look. Yeah, I know. Doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad. There somewhere. Yeah. Kind of just hope for the best. No, I'm like hoping. <laughs> oh, here's our original oh, landing our, spot. Yeah, that's the. This is where we've landed train. it before, oh, right yeah. underneath this train wheel, kind oh. of in this area. How'd that work out? Uh, I wasn't on that. This Maybe is old yeah. old chunks of aluminum. Well, we could go for the train wheel target. Yeah. Well, if you use a train wheel and set it in here, maybe, how yeah. would that be? I can do that. Yeah, let's try that. That's pretty good. Okay. Give me a minute, Megan. I'll give you an exact door. Don't land on the crab. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do I now mean, is... It'll look bad on us. Yeah. We <laughs> are going to uh, He'll move. position the ROV over the train wheel. And then we're going to use our sonar to get a range. Yeah, that's the original there. spot. So it has moved... Where's Herc on this right now? Is that guy... Yeah, it's moved quite a bit south, 10 meters south or so. Southeast. Where'd it go? It's gone. So, as I've mentioned before, I failed horribly at math, so I'm going to uh, just I'm right over the train wheel, yeah. You can still, could see in my uh, down-looking camera. And now I'm going to call that 7, 8 meters. Let's do 10 meters, um, the inverse of my heading, which is 195. 10 meters, 195. 10 meters what? 10 meters, 195. Okay. Bridge nav. Dan, do you want me to match your heading? Yes. Can we move 10 meters, 195? I don't really care. I'm underneath you, so it doesn't matter. So basically, you're trying to hit the ROV with the package. Right? <laughs> that sounds like... What I was trying to avoid this whole time. No, you want to you want to <laughs> move it right to me. Bring it to me, maybe. All right, I'm working on it. It's gonna take 20 minutes. I'll slide out of the way. So the train wheel will be a good, you know. We might have to do a few more vessel moves once we get in the neighborhood. 10 meters is a long way away. Mhm. Mm 
So if we're releasing this, how is it coming back up? Is there enough buoyancy on it to bring it to the surface? No, it's going to have to be a uh, hookup. Oh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a, that's gonna be a slow one. Uh, easy one Well, if you do it all day, every day, you can do it without the crane stopping. Like as he's coming down, you grab the hook, fly back, put a nice catenary in front of you, you come down, make the hook, and while he's still coming down, then he goes the other way, you get out of the way and they pick it up. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's what we're going to try and rig. Well, Dan, you found out yesterday what happens when you give me a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the, you know, 250 horsepower RV with two two manipulators on it that move a little <coughs> that are meant for that stuff. So you have a big grabber on the left, you can grab the hook and you put some slack in it. It's a heavy hook too. It would slam Herc into the rocks if we tried that with this vehicle. <laughs> you're a lot uh, buoyant, you know, your ballast probably, you know, you can pick up hundreds of pounds of jewelry and fly it around. Like I said, taking lots of notes on this cruise. Mm -hmm. Buy an HD bone stock, big generator to go on the back deck, and an A-frame to go with it, and then science the heck out of it. That would be interesting. Always been my dream. I'm used to a vehicle half the size of Hook. <laughs> Same amount of horsepower, though. Yeah. What's the uh, barometer doing on Taz motor there? Is it up in the... I to full screen it for a minute. Or scroll down here. Wow. Nice. That's the highest I've seen it since we've been out here. Nice comfortable in here. Uh, no, I got 30 inches of mercury there. <laughs> There is one that says HPA for you. It's kind of funny. I just uh, was talking to my partner about Grafana and how we're going to outfit our house with Grafana, and he got really excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. He loves statistics, and he's the science nerd in him is already thinking about what we're going to put. We're going to have a screen next to the front door that's going to have, <laughs> like, our live calendar, and it will be, the, it'll be a touch screen so we can put whatever uh, statistics we want up or yeah I can uh, I can help you out there get well, set up definitely gonna need to help it's easy once you've done it a couple times and it's just copy paste copy paste we'll just give you a couple months free rent to help us uh, outfit our house to be a smart house oh, I'm down with that <laughs> Like I woke up to a text message saying, what's the free CAD software you use? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to come home and have a bamboo lab sitting in my office. Ooh, that'd be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said the same thing. And my accountant said they would divorce me if uh, that happened. Well, the good news is my <laughs> accountant is the one making the ideas. Oh, so nice. It's going to be fun. Where did the train wheel go? My ears away from it now. Hello. You can switch back over to your DP screen if you want, Megan. That um, sonar dyne screen is no longer pertinent. Move complete. Just waiting on it. Oh, there's our train wheel. <laughs> you 
you got to remember to take this thing out of auto XY to move it around because you can like put in this huge to go and it will keep going. <laughs> So, update on the movement action. The train wheel is directly below the ROV. The package is 7.5 meters away. Still headed south, I think. Still swinging south. <laughs> I think we can tilt down the sonar and uh, take a look at exactly where it is. Exactly where what is? <laughs> where the train wheel is in, in relation. Oh. <laughs> if we had a uh, Gemini on the pan and tilt, we certainly could. Or Blue View. We did a, the very first job I did with a blue view on the pan and tilt. We could watch a dive, well, it was a diver support job, so we're spending a lot of time hanging out doing la di da. And we could watch the diver walking across the seabed holding the big, like, you know, they have big, big weapons. <coughs> and you could see his arm swinging and see <laughs> he's holding something. Real time. Yeah, we were looking at them, but uh, it seems like they don't make them to full depth. Uh, I think they do nowadays. Well, they do, it's cost prohibitive. Mm. You can rent them. The amount of time that you spend out, I would rent all the really cool jewelry and integrate it. You can actually make a deal if you get in with one of the rental companies. They won't charge you until you actually take it out of the box or until you like put it in the water. So they'll give you a standby rate you know, for your mob time while you're doing all your whips and mobilizing the vehicle and sailing out. So uh, then the, you know, the, the actual time you're using it. And uh, yeah, there's a few rental companies that will cut you some deals like that. Huh. Wouldn't that be a fun way to operate a company? Just rent? Subsea equipment to the research fleet. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, that's what many of the big outfits do. They don't own all that stuff. They they uh, rent it, and there's there's a couple big rental uh, company fleets. They have you know everything, manipulators, any kind of ROV tooling you can imagine, anything from hooks down you know, like the hook there, that pink hook, you can rent one of those. Is that the kind of hook we have on here that we have to disc, uh, we'll have to hook up? I don't know what kind of craziness they're going to come up with there. So I'm going to slide back a little. It's getting uh, within five meters of me and then come down a bit. Back under Atalanta where it's safe. Look at that heading, Jake. It's walking. Oh, yeah. Why is, why is that happening? Autopilot. Yeah, I was chasing it around somehow. I don't even remember doing it. I'm gonna. I think we're okay here. I'm just gonna look north. In theory, we should soon be able to see a train wheel and a basket. Come on, Herc, hold your heading. See the train wheel. I see the crab. Crab marks the spot. Ah, there's the train wheel. You can uh, come down a couple meters there, Megan. Yep, coming down. No, Megan. Oh. 
Logan. On the winch. Yeah, come down two meters. Two meters? Yeah. Winch control. Can we come down two meters? Two meters down, easy. Sorry, Deck, come back. Uh, you're all stopped on it, are you? Yeah, I'm going to steal your radio in the net, so. Video is in a watch change for everybody. Right, right, right. Oh, those are dangerous. That's looking pretty good from here. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, while we're uh, changing watch here, I'm just going to sneak up to it and uh, <clears throat> I'll give you, uh, tell you how far away from the train wheel it is. Yeah, um, and for people watching, the reason we're taking such a long time is because of the pillows on the seafloor. If this thing doesn't land flat, you might save half an hour, an hour in the deployment of it but it will cost you hours in the in the long run or make tasks impossible so this is just time well spent taking our time now so and our rov is <coughs> directly over the train wheel now uh, there's the crab and it's uh maybe five what's half a seven and a half three and a half meters away I love that the crab is a landmark. Yeah. Crab in a train. It's wheel. slow enough that it just sits there. <laughs> uh, it feels like another five meters south, or you want to go for it there? It's up to you. Uh, if we're right above it, then I think let's do your let's do the five meters south just to be safe. Yeah. Right. I okay. agree with you on that one. Ship move five meters south. Yes, please. Okay. That's Bridge kind now. of our minimum movement, our footprint. I really want to be able to see the train wheel and the uh, south, package please? in the yeah. camera. Thank you. Video back on comms. Roger. Morning, Jacob. Good morning, Lynette. How you doing? Good morning. Mm. Afternoon, I guess. Afternoon, I don't know. <laughs> time Hello. Oh, good morning, back row. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm energized. <laughs> energized? Who is that back there? I, that voice is familiar. <laughs> Mal and I. Toolbox. What we're trying to do, Mal and I, we're taking a long time to do this evolution here. We're just, we're really worried about putting that tool basket down on that crab, so keep moving around. But the crab keeps coming right under the basket, so. I wonder if the crab's like, I'm going to catch it. Give I it to me. So. I want to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes the shadow. Well, the it's crab might think there's food in the basket, so they've been <coughs> trained, you know, when the basket comes down, go to the basket. Picnic basket. Yeah. I think they'd be trained the opposite. They'd see the big cage-looking thing come down, run away. No, they crawl all over it. <laughs> well, I know. They'd like, go oh, food. They heard something, felt something smelled something. I don't know how they figure it out, but 
Mmm, the smell of metal. They come a running. <laughs> the blazing crab speed of. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. I was just telling Kim, this is my first time in an afternoon dive. All I've done is 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. So it's nice to hear the new voices. Mm. Yeah, that's too. We're usually on deck, rebuild, putting the ROV back together to go back <laughs> in the water. The fun and hard part of this job. Your your mic isn't on. I mean, it's on, but the... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Where is that pesky train wheel? There it is. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. The excitement killing me. Um, so how do we feel about coming down two meters on that package? I never did get an uppy-downy theoretical number. Yeah, I think you're in that three meter worst case zone. And I think two meters is great for coming down. Yeah, I yeah, think so. I think so. Give us a good idea of where we're sitting. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Winch, control vent. So it's just been a while to really position. Yeah, can we pay out two meters? Two meters, nice and slow, please. Control van copies, stand by. I almost think we could do another two meters. Yeah, let me get a little, uh, let me play with it here. I'm six meters up, but I'm gonna come down a bit. <coughs> when do you think I'm like, you know, parallel, level, level with it? This is when the client always asks, how high is it off the seabed now? Okay, one second. Um, have you guys requested that two meters yet or not yet? We did, and the two meters is complete. I'm just playing with the ROV coming down a little because the next thing you usually ask us is, how high is it off the seabed now? Uh, okay. <laughs> how about now? How about now? So if I come down a little bit closer to the seabed, ROV is now four meters and coming down a little. Yeah, so I'll give you a little bit better perspective. There, that's us three meters off the seabed there. Yeah, it's three meters off. And it also gives you a little closer, uh, you know, you can tell where it's going to land, maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, it looks like it's still a little far away, actually, from the, what do you, what's your impression of what we're seeing here? It is exactly, the backside of the basket is uh, two and a half meters away from the ROV, so however wide the basket is, Oh, the back side of the basket? Okay. Yeah, I well, can give you a more accurate number if you want. This looks a little far, but... What's that? I think I think our next step should be... Once we get this number, but probably transducing the water down to depth, because that's going to take some time. Then lower it another meter. Oh, it's, five, it's five meters away from us, and our altitude is three meters. Okay. So I would say it's bouncing to within a couple meters there on that big dip. Yeah. You want to move south another five? And I think we got to move south another little, little bit. 
And uh, okay, let me let me get a. If you think that's possible, I mean. Absolutely. What's your what's your interpretation of what you're seeing? I think it's still a few meters back. I do too. Um, could they swing the crane a couple meters? <laughs> <laughs> they could, yeah, totally. Usually the final moves. Can the problem is the um, fleet angle of our winch doesn't really allow us to do that. Well, the they block. can come in and out, you know, yeah, closer. So, but, yeah. but we don't. We don't want to go there. We'll we'll just move the vessel. I think once the, we get a little more this way, the, the train wheel is actually a little higher off the bottom than where it is right now. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. How, about how much more we can lower it? It kind of looks like it might yeah, drop I, right where we want it. It is. Uh, do you think that's pretty much pretty close? I'd say it's bouncing within a couple meters. I can five meters away. That's you know comfortable distance for me. I can. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, Megan. What's your interpretation here? Dr put it down there. It's not. We can move another five meters south. See what yeah. happens. Yeah, let's move. Let's move to move another five meters and yes. see where it's at. Actually, uh, one one nine five, Lynette, if you please. Yeah. So we're gonna do another ship move, far back. Your, your goal is to hit the ROV with the package. That's five meters at one nine five. Yeah. Bridge now. Yeah. Five more meters. Can we have five meters? One nine five. It's please? just such a disaster when it lands like this. Thank you. That's I'm gonna uh, bring him up just a hours. bit while we're making the move, Dirk. Yep, that's right. good. Good call. All right. Uh, winch, winch, control van. Can you come up two meters, please? Up two meters. Yeah. yeah. Okay. With Dougie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Touch. Contact there. <laughs> okay, sure. Did you see that? I didn't that see what, what, what happened. Oh, it just on that big heave there. Just barely, yeah. barely touched. <laughs> just breathing. Just <laughs> breathing off the seabed. That's what we want. Yes. Oh, you have? Okay. Sorry. Yep, I was just distracted there. How far did you bring it up for the move? Two meters. Two meters. Okay. Yeah, it should be back to where it was. Okay. That uh, on the big roll there, it, it, you know, the wire didn't come slack or anything. It just barely touched the, uh, the low hanging corner there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are we trying to land this on the wheel? What we're going to do is we're going to wait till it does the heave and then we're going to release right when it's like <laughs> close to the bottom. You're going to find we're going to release it like. Control van copies. Uh, we're just moving the ship, just for an update for you guys back there. Uh, we're moving the ship. We're getting really close to our target here. Uh, just full to be aware, it's very likely not going to release on the first release. So yeah, Roger. I was there's teasing no about timing. The yeah, timing okay. thing. Yeah. yeah, ship move is done. Is this on an acoustic release? Yeah, on a okay. dual. Yeah. That looks pretty good, that lineup. Ship moves down yet, yeah, still still swinging a little bit. Yeah. We're watching it on the, uh, so the ROV is holding position there, and we're watching uh, what's happening there with the yeah. sonar. So it might start walking around in the uh, DP footprint. You ready for that uh, two meters back? Yeah, I'm ready, and then if we want to put that transducer in the water, they can get it down. I thought they did that already. No. I, have we requested them to put it in? Uh, I don't think so. I have been. I was. I no, was I don't. Mistake. I poorly assumed that uh, you no, were doing I'm that back there. No, I everything. I want everything to go through through Nav to do the request. Roger. I've stole Nav's radio because. Okay, if you can request it, then <laughs> transducer in the water. That's Roger. that's a great time for it. I kind of like having the radio in my hand while we're looking at a package. Just yep. uh, old school habit. That's perfect. So transducer okay. and then another two meters down and then hit the release or something. Yeah, we'll let them get the deucer in and then we'll come yeah. down the last two meters at the last minute. Yeah, sounds good. Meanwhile, we'll watch it. Yeah. Deck, deck, control van. Yeah, can you put your deucer in the water and lower it down to the required depth?
All right, uh, thank you. I like where it's sitting. It looks good. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. We can uh, land it on the train wheel. That would be sweet. Yeah. As so long as it doesn't end up teetering on the train wheel. <laughs> Are we trying to hit the train wheel? Uh, that's our general target location. Okay. Yeah, they have landed a package here previously. Uh, the train wheel and the grading and such there. And that was, uh, you know, successful. <coughs> those uh, little mats you see there. We were dragging those all the way around into Rogers Pass and sliding them under cables that were going over vents and deploying instruments around. And what's that part of the structure that keeps collapsing where you try and put a camera up there? Oh, the grotto, that pl that platform, that kind of patio. Over by Tempo. Roger Mini. that, roger that. Yeah, lower the transducer down. Uh, and then uh, once you have the transducer at the uh, at the depth we want that we need to, then we'll have you uh, make some final adjustments on the winch, and then we'll let her go. Roger right that. Yeah, there's a big part of that structure that keeps collapsing. And, I, and it's like this little perch up there, and we've and the tripod camera and a bunch of other instruments, and part of the one of the grates. And <coughs> uh, well, was yeah, two years ago, our network was offline, or this site was offline for a season, yeah. and there was a massive landslide where it took took apart like a, a huge chunk of grotto, buried a bunch of our cables, severed a <laughs> bunch of cables, and we didn't record any of it, unfortunately. That was very unfortunate. Could have been a good rumble on the hydrophones. Yeah. So they don't record autonomously when they're offline. They have to, they have, to uh, have an internet connection. Yeah, not ours. I mean, they can record autonomously, but it's a different mode that you have to configure them in. Right. I wonder if they've got it down in the water yet. Uh, they might just not be on the con confirming it. Yeah, okay, yeah. it looks like he's walking over there to something. Nope. <laughs> uh, might have to do a connector or um, something. It's not on the slip ring, so. Here, I, I can do this. Uh, to, to, uh, let's see if I can do it. Keep an eye on that thing. Make sure it doesn't hit me, will you? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of creeping in on your side there. This AJ's humongous laptop is taking my spot. Deck control, copy transducer in position. Seems like it's come towards us a little bit now. So. Are you ready to come down that two meters? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Deck control, can you come down two meters on the winch? Pay out two meters nice and easy, please. A 
just moved past the chain wheel now to this flat spot. Yeah, but oh well. Looks pretty good still. It's hard to say, but I think we we don't have the instrument to really nail a train wheel landing like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'd need a DP2 action. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty good. Any more could just cause us trouble. Okay, you want to come down more to release, or you want to do? I think it just there, there is fine. Yeah, because we're gonna be start touching down on it. Deck control van copies two meters paid out. You are clear to release the package. Clear to release. that uh, yeah, acoustic like release up what do you mean up is it further up the yeah uh, it's up yeah it's that right there isn't it yeah, the two shinies two shinies roger they're in parallel yeah so either one they can trigger either one that will be a good time for it to release i wonder if we're a little close and maybe you have to come up a meter Uh, no, it's not touching the bottom there. I don't see it breathing, right? You would see it... Uh, no, no, I, I agree with you. It's, it's, I don't think it's touching. The noise from Hook's HPU can interfere with those releases quite, um, I'm backing away. quite a lot. Yeah. I'll stop trusting. I can turn off the HPU. It could help. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that request, bro. Can you stop <laughs> trusting? Yeah, we might. Like, So we know the spot's pretty good. Yeah, um, I'm at some away. point, back he does have tension time. monitoring on the on the on the winch as well. Roger. I'm gonna come up on uh, Atalanta a little bit. I can confirm it has not been released. It does not appear to be released. You can tell him to just keep trying, um, keep pinging it. Have to uh, send the code a few more times. gone as far as uh, shutting down the ship and going dead stick to send a signal for one of these acoustic releases. It's, um, it is difficult a lot of the times. That's why we normally do the tandem, because there's the plumes, there's the, um, yeah. the ship and the ROVs, but mm -hmm. what we might have to do if, we, if this doesn't work is we know if we're happy with the position, I would then probably want to come up a meter on the winch and then back off at the ROV or something that but I think we should try them both a few times. Yeah. Can you change my range there to uh, that little guy to uh, just bump it up one? Perfect. I'm 15 meters away from it now, so just far enough to be able to hopefully see the uh, yellow strap. <laughs> Noise in that water column. What's that, Jake? A lot of noise in that water column. Herc, ship. Let's three go up with my uh, three USBOs. Green River dive knife and slash that sling. <laughs> Freddy Krueger. That's the worst case scenario. Copy that. I don't know if we have the ability on this boat to do it or not, but we've actually hooked a deck box into the ship's built-in transducer on the Kilo Moana and got good success out of that. Mm. I don't think we have, I don't know if we have that ability. I've had good success cutting those yellow slings with that Green River dive knife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's I, quite fun. down the road, what we'd like to explore is putting this the comms cable, the coax, that to a release of something. Cable on the end of the wire so you can trigger it electronically from the surface not oh acoustically yeah. it is a ctd wire right? it is a ctd wire yeah that would be sweet yeah so get, it, uh, but we might we don't have that technology yet in-house so we're gonna start shopping around now that 
the winch has done some casts or some deployments. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, how about winch you got there. Yeah, it's a compact little unit, yeah. Yeah. How do you find that tech support from Hobbolt? <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a bummer because you know, they make a nice product, but you can make the best product in the world, and the tech support can make or break how the client feels about that. We get pretty good tech support. Uh, sorry, say again. Can you turn up the radio a little bit? Sending release code. Uh, can you repeat, please? I did not copy either. We are sending the release code again. Copy, sending the release code again. stretches in that CTD wire, so. Does that little wire stretch a lot when he releases? Is it going to fly up or is it just going to sit there pretty as you please? Is um, it going to try and attack Depends me? on the weight and uh, load on it, but it should, it should be too bad. It's a pretty light wire, that yeah. 322. There's a weight up above, is, is there? Is that how they got it or is that right? No, it's just to the dual releases. So they're about 60 pounds in water. Yeah. Under. Anticlimactic. Yeah. How hard would it be to secure the HPU on hook? Impossible. We only have one uh, power switch, and it's that one right there. Well, I mean, oh, okay, so it will fire back up at depth, no problem. All the lights would go out. We'd lose control of the vehicle. Yeah, that ain't happening. Yeah. Not on purpose, anyways. <laughs> it is a lot quieter when you unload it, though. Uh, I could go into bypass. I'd be, I'd be hip to doing that. Trying to arrange that with them triggering it. I don't know how often they're trying to ping it. So what happens when I go into bypass? Do we lose it? start drifting away but uh, we can try that if you wish yeah if you're okay with it yeah. but just make sure they're they're pinging it deck control Go ahead. yeah I've got the uh, ROV HPU idling so if you want to try and send the code again there it's might be a little quieter for you Roger that. Give me a shout when you're ready to send the code again, and I'll go into bypass with the ROV, and it might uh, help quiet things down a little. Okay. Uh, we're ready. Roger that. Uh, clear to send. ROV is in bypass. Do we know what frequency that uh, code no. is being sent? 
No, I'm not exactly sure, but we've we've done it with RVs in the water here before. It's um, we might have to back as far off station as we can. Oh, yeah. I can back up another. Uh, we don't have 10 to, see, you won't be able it. to see it. Yeah, they don't have to see it. I think I think if we don't see it though, we need to come up a, like a little bit on the winch just in case. It, it I'd rather let it drop than hook. It hasn't touched there at all. Yeah, it's pretty close though. Come up another two meters. Go uh, have a look at it real quick and uh, see what you think. There we go. Affirmative. The package has been released. What's that beacon doing? It's rocketing up. <laughs> Roger, stand by. Let me see if I can get a picture of it here. It's up above me. Oh, spinning around. Getting some twists out. This part you worked it worked that wire pretty. Got some memory out of the like surging like that for that long. A lot of spins. And it had a swivel on during deployment, too. Yeah, swivels are... Depends on whether they work well or not. Uh, attack control. Uh, just stand by for a minute. We're sitting here watching your uh, wire spin out. Uh, what's the RPM, Denny? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. I think 15. 15? Yeah. Oh, your mechanical engineering folks, they can RPM in the blink of an eye. <laughs> to actually buy around 30, 40 RPM. 30, 40? For so that thing spinning? I think it's spinning well, about... Well, I counted about 10 1, rotations 2, in, ten, in 15 1, seconds. 1,000, Slowing 1, down. Yeah, I've got Six. three per... I got three seconds per. <laughs> So that's, I'm getting 20. Really? Yeah, one, two, three, I guess three and a half. Yeah, okay, maybe 30. It's slowing down. Appears to be slowing down. One, you probably have them start hauling two, in if you wanted to. Yeah, no, three. Yeah, I'm, we're good whenever Recover if, the. If you're happy with the beacon position, that it didn't change, not near anything. Uh, no, it tried to poke me. I backed up. Okay. Bit. I'm lighting it up about 10 meters away. All right. So whenever you're ready. Deck, deck, control. You are clear to recover your uh, winch. Recovering the uh, whatever you call it, acoustic release. Yeah. She uh, slowed down there. It's just spinning, maybe five RPM now, slowing down to a stop. So yeah, and come up on it. See, I talk too much and confused him. Yeah, please recover. Recover acoustic release. Roger that. Recovering acoustic release. Sorry about that. And away it goes. We'll just sit here for a minute until it disappears out of our sonar, and then I'll come down and have a look for you. Interesting, you can still see the wire in uh, Atlantis sonar. You could probably uh, spot that wire. Oh, I got Atlantis sonar set on some strange divisions, but. Six meters.
fell us a little, just a little hint of it, and we might get one more sweep on it. Oh, see, look, they're already attacking. Where's lunch? Where it's going. <laughs> Jake, you want to uh, play with that Atlantisonar and set it back uh, spinning the other way, at whatever its regular divisions are? I would say that was a successful tool basket deployment. Look how level we got that thing. Yeah, nice and flat. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Crab is convinced there's lunch here somewhere. It's amazing how fast they move in. Patience pays off. Often. Yeah. Okay, what am I doing here? The first thing we're going to do is, from this side, we're going to remove that uh, bars instrument from the tool basket. The one, the one that the crab is looking to attack. Hey, buddy. Get out of there. My arm's bigger than yours. Uh, what is... Um, are those uh, gladiuses stuck to the... They are. They're just for um, cinching things down after the fact. Uh, am I meant to open the door or just pick it up out of there? Uh, I think it'll be easier to open the door. Uh, it looks like... Let me just go have a look here. So, yeah. Have a look. If it's easier to pull it out, then go for it. I it think I just reach in there and grab it. Looks like the crab's trying to unhook it for us. So. Oh, that's kind. It looks, looks like there is a... You come down five meters, Danny. Yep. <coughs> and it looks like there is a bungee hooked to the door right in front of us that is going over the... Over the bars. Yeah, oh. Can you zoom in on the crab there for us, video? Can I do that? Look at that guy. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, so the bungee appears to be going over the door by the crab's, uh, right by the crab's leg there. Yeah. So it looks like we got to... Got to unhook that. It looks, looks like, like we got to unhook that. Crab. Just needed to talk to the crab and tell him to unhook it for us. The crab's like the, uh, look at him. He's all Excuse me, Mr. Crab. We've got some work to get then. <laughs> oh, we got to put this crab on the payroll. <laughs> you can get paid overtime. <laughs> <laughs> CTO, baby. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, after all that excitement, I'm going to have a check of our gauges. Gauge check, check. Gauges are good. Uh, I'm going to go to number three for you here. Roger. Oh, you've been, you've been busy over there. So we're pretty close to it. Uh, you can go wide for us, video. Pulling wide? Why am I in the rack in, rack out world? I'm going to rack back a bit. Can you confirm yeah. that you've still got um, an untriggered gas tight in your ROV I, I can neither basket? confirm nor deny. If you give me a second, I will. Yep. Just told the purple one. That one right there looks untriggered. I'm yeah, okay. Untriggered. Give me a second. I'll play with the lights, too. Okay. Just oh, much check better. Harvey, I'm going to push in just slightly to get the housing out of frame. Yes, please. All set? All set. Fantastic. Um, I don't see the little... Uh, uh, the plastic came off last night. Oh, on the starboard one. And the port one, is it still... Yeah, we only... Um, um, video, can you zoom in there, please? Absolutely. That one appears that the O-ring is still in yeah. the untriggered Intact. position. Josh told me on watch it. Purple. Yeah. Um, trust but verify here. 
That, and that, that one, one we definitely triggered. Yeah. yeah. So be careful of that one, Danny. It doesn't have the safety on it. Yep. Um, so we don't want to trigger it. In addition to the bars, we're going to want to grab one of the gas tights that is uh, hooked up on the side of the tool basket. Roger. Okay. So. Um, so, so let's talk this through now. So. Um, we are extremely ballast sensitive, and the bars weighs a beanbag, two beanbags, you know, and uh, we can trade, uh, so you're saying we're going to trade uh, a gas tight for a gas tight? Um. Is that what you... I want two fresh gas tights on the ROV. If you, you know, depending on how you want to manage things, the one that's been triggered you can either leave in the box or you can put it in the uh, tool uh, tool basket, whatever works for you. Roger. And we're going to trigger the gas tight before or after bars deployment? Uh, before. We'll trigger it in the in the orifice first and then we'll put the bars in that same orifice and will we need to do any um you know rooting around or anything or is that is it already open and ready to oh no we'll need the uh the reamer for sure roger so in that case i would suggest that we trade a used gas tape for a new one and put it in the front box and then we'll uh do the bars rodeo here, but we might want to also uh, verify where the reamer is. I think it's in our starboard uh, toolbox somewhere. So the gas tight is from here somewhere? Uh, just if you pan over to the right, it's on um, the side of the tool basket there. On the right side, right there. Yeah, okay, there, gonna, there's um, four the right of them side. all bungeed together. Let's see what we have over here. Yeah, they are. Can you hit uh, one on the... Uh, oh, never, never mind. What do we have here? They're all bungeed. So we lose the bungee, we get four of them? No, they're, they're like... Individually rigged? Yeah. But then there's a like a bungee through all of them. I see, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you hit one on the uh, bubble cam just for a minute? Let me get a nudge in there, make sure I'm not... Anything silly with the front of the vehicle? Uh, where would you like me positioned to release that bungee? Dan? That looks like a good spot, actually. Roger that. So I gotta pull the gray one, then pull the white one. Well, actually, that monkey fist will pull. So the, the gray, gray one, one, the gray one, it's is holding the, the door. door shut. But it's over top of the white one. But it's over the top of the white one. When we got on the back side, it looks like it's tied on the back side. Yeah, it's tied on the other side of it, and there's one bungee over top of the entire bundle of them. And then they're sitting on that rail. So this first green monkey fist, and then this second uh, loop with the orange tape. Yeah, you can monkey fist, or the other way, since we have the parallel jaws, you can carefully just grab the edge of the... Of the uh, gray PVC ring. Yeah. And you have a little more control of it that way. So we're in tight here. Um, I would recommend nice okay. and slow. Uh, can we back out? Uh, no. What do you mean, rack out? Uh, the camera, Sleep? the HD. Rack, no, I want to rack in. We'll zoom out a little bit. I think we are wide. Uh, we're not wide. Oh yeah, you can go wide. Pulling wide. Much better. That's what he's on about. Okay. Craft coming on. Raja. So nice and slow so you don't steal my flow. Because I ain't yep. got a lot of it. Nice and slow. Okay, video. Uh, zoom in on me. Absolutely. Going in. Say one. Beautiful, right there. I'm just gonna tilt 
Mm. You're good there. So what you got to do is lift that off and then let it go. See the HD camera moving, that means you're pushing the vehicle around, so. I'm gonna grab this rope and lift it up. Yeah, you can go for the monkey fist. You know. You could probably do a twofer if you really wanted to. You could grab the white one and that'll spring the uh, gray one too, you know. I could try that, but I think... So you're pulling the vehicle there? <laughs> Vehicle's gonna come back for you. <laughs> okay, we're about to bump. Yeah, that's alright. It's gonna come back and find its home. Okay. Go wide video. Pulling wide. Okay. Go back in. Mm, pitch down a little. See how you got your pitch. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to rotate. Okay. RV happy with this view? For now. Sure. Okay. Zoom in. Roger that. Zoom in. Right there. Hold. So that one uh, we don't want to let go. We're going to have to carefully unthread it through the gas tanks. Yes. Without ripping all the little safeties off. <coughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also going to move the vehicle around, probably. So I'm going to. So this Swing the camera to the right a little, Danny. Yep, and then I'm going to have you go wide a little bit. Just watch your brow because you kind of might have to feed it through the handles there. Yep, I'm working on that. Uh, can I get the bubble cams uh, to look over for sure. me? And you said pull wide? Just a little bit. Roger that. That's good right there. Okay. be uh, great if we could see the bungee and not the manipulator. I think yeah, this is a lot easier on on the deck. That's because you were using two hands. <laughs> <laughs> and and two eyes. Well, you might as well get it out of the rest of them, Danny, while you got it. Oh. Would you like, uh, never mind, I'll just be quiet. <laughs> nice. Beautifully done. I can't see the manipulator. Go wide, video. Pulling wide. Are you guys familiar with the layout of this um, tool basket, okay. or do you want me to show you where the next you one is? There, Danny, hold what you got. So Holding. We got to. Um, we um, have to. Uh, this one here. There's another one right there, right? We have to uh, get rid of the cast tire we have. Are you saying there's another bungee on this? There's thing? another bungee holding them in towards, and you can see the ring right here. You right. can see it pass, and it's on a bolt, and you have to pull this one. Okay. Uh, Bob, over here. Let's look around here. Yeah. That crab okay. is coming for you. I know, he's like, what's going on? My claws are bigger than your claws. So. Uh, I don't quite get it. Do you? Yeah, do I do. Uh, zoom in video. Zoom in. So there's a, a loop 
a, a floating line with a black electrical tape on it. So yeah. you see this white and you ring can see right now? Oh, I see, the I see, bungee I see, is wrapped around. And the ring is constrained by a bolt with a washer, and you can just see the washer just kind of at the bottom the of your screen, around, just below that line. So we grab uh, I grabbed the black the tape. The black tape. And, and I pull towards me and really and it looks it like swing around. From here just just the, the bolt is attached to the uh, tool basket. Yeah. Yeah, the rusty angle iron there. It might be worth your while if you while you have it to bring it around the far side of the gas sites and drop it where you drop this one so you can access it later so it's not stuck inside, right? I yeah. think uh, okay. I think uh, we could I wanna change the position, we'll come around so you can see what you're doing. Uh, I think it's just a good position though. Well you'll have to reach over all the gas sites. No, that's what I was gonna Oh yeah, I can't I do that on here. I don't have the have yeah. Never mind. I don't have crane mode. I do not have crane mode. Uh, plus, we got to get rid of the other gas state, so we'll put it down there in okay. that clear spot. Uh, wide video. All right, pulling wide. So if you uh, pull your weapon away there, just uh, yep. you can put it in the bottom lower right of the camera. It's fine where I can still see it. Yeah, it's going to adjust to get that housing under shot. Still finding the range on that one. So you still have one good gas site secured and one that you sampled, that they sampled the, that's what's the, it called, uh, the pool, the that's flange the pool. Yeah. Did they get the flange pool sample? Yeah, they did get it. Yeah. Awesome. I want to see the highlights oh. of that. Careful, we have those nozzles sticking out still. Yeah, Roger, the nozzles. You can hit oh, one on bubble cam. Uh, you'll have to turn your craft off. I have zero control right now. Okay, craft coming off. If you wanted to switch ballast for these nozzles for bead bags, there are bead bags nearby. We are going to eventually do that. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, just down the line. So it seems intermittent, because like, when I sat down, I had, <coughs> now that you've used the craft, it, it, whatever is happening is happening more now. Nope, I just jumped up to 3600 PSI. Which is way above what our. So it's popping. It's likely popping the relief valve. I don't know. Uh, are you still using the bubble cam? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just give me a minute here. I'm gonna bring a wounded RV back down to the optimal position. I think you'll be able to do the reach right to get the gas tight off. Uh, do we want to throw the old gas tight in? We do, that's why first. I'm moving back around here to get a really good shot of this crab. For recovery, um, we want to put the gas sites in a similar, in that spot where the existing gas sites are so that we can strap them in. So wherever you put it, we will have to load it there later. Uh, right, yeah. uh, maybe we'll just pick it up and set it right back where we picked it up from. What do you think, Dan? Think we can uh, pick that one up, throw it on the porch, and uh, grab the other one and set it I right in position? I don't know. Position? Landing there over here right now, let me think. Okay. Sorry, I can't multitask that. No problem. You're tied up against the yes, box. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Am I free for on? I think, I think. So what do you think? I think that we could take the gas tank we have in the porch now and put it on the rail there where you left the bungees uh -huh. and then get the one right next to it and put back in the tool basket. Uh, I'm going to take control of bubble. Just trade one for the other. Well, that's why I was thinking. I pull this one first and then... No, I think we get rid of the one we have first hang it on the rail, then grab the new one and put it back where the one we have is. Yeah, we could try that. Um, that way we're minimizing our time. Uh, yeah. Un unballasted by a whopping 15 Makes sense. PSI. Okay, I'm coming on. Uh, sure. Video go wide? You wide? Okay, you're good. So you're in there really tight. I might have a little bit more wide, but not, not much. Yeah, that's fine. Just watch those nozzles on the left-hand side if you can. Yeah, I'm watching them. 
Am I too tight for you, Danny, or can you? No, I think I can make this work. Uh, you're going to have to tuck right in and then yep. come around and poke the uh, Zeus right in the eye. Claw game the, for the crab. Careful of the crab. Just trying to just uh, trying video, to get can breakfast. I get you to zoom in a little more? Roger that, pushing in. Oh, Chris was an arm wrestle with the octopus. Don't. What are you doing? What are you Stop. Doing? I need to go ahead. Oh, apologies. I'm sorry. I was going to pull the bungee. The bungee. The bungee that's going to stop us from putting a new... No, we need to get this one out of the box. I know, oh, but I, can't I see, set I see. It. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Sorry, you're right. I'm jumping ahead. Step one, pull bungee. Yeah, Roger. I lost the plot there. My bad. <laughs> okay, you got it. It's all it's yours. Crab, it makes a very good door. Okay, video, go uh, Go zoom in. Zooming in. You got bubble where do. you need it. Yep. We got the crane game here with uh, Mr. Krabs. That's all you can. Uh, do for zoom action because uh, that's fine i just I'm try not to right. grab a grab a crab because if you grab the rope there um there we go bye friend no oh, just when you think the crab, uh, <laughs> King the come back in come on rv i'll take you on that's my dinner they can get quite agitated twist. Go wide video. Pulling wide. Now I can. Um, I'm going to Tilt down, Danny, and open the uh, yep. toolbox. I'll Sounds you, good. You want to get the arm where you need it, or are you happy for me to? I am happy with this out? spot right now. Go ahead and open the box. Tilting down. Your victim is going to be right there. So I'm just going to bump out, see what happens. I might push it. Okay, so I'm heading for that green and black handle. That is correct. That's good right there. I think I can get it. Well, I'm going to give you a little more room to get it out of there. Yep, no problem. Game. Uh, stand by. Okay, standing by. Hmm, okay. Okay, now you're pushing stuff on the porch. Yeah. I've pushed it as far as I can go. Now you get to experience what I call drunken bubble. Is uh, <laughs> yeah. driving backwards while intoxicated? I can never do it. <laughs> I can, I, I can look there look. just for a second, yeah, yeah, just to see where you are in the neighborhood, and then I look back at the. Yeah. Can you Possibly. do the same? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I don't even look at that one, like Jake says. It's just there for the uh, to confuse you. Now, confusing is all the manipulation controls being exactly opposite of what you're used to. Yeah. It's like rocking up in Aberdeen in the middle of a snowstorm and getting into the car on the wrong side. It's kind of awesome because i got to think, okay, to rotate in, i got to rotate my arm. Oh, pop Don't it. Don't think about it. Just move the arm till the, the jaws go where you want them to go. I just made my job way harder. You don't have to grab it by the T-handle now. I would just nope. uh, put the uh, Come back okay. out of there now? Yeah. Okay. 
swing the swing the uh, shoulder to the right a little. There we go. So I'm gonna tilt up a bit for you. Swing to your right. So you're gonna want to have the jaw pointing down. Yep. Yeah, something like that. But you're gonna have to be kicked in a little, and then you can just come in like that and swing left and get it. I might have a touch more uh, zoom out if that'd be helpful. Uh, that should do you there, Danny. You can see he keeps trying to rotate the forearm <laughs> in a Ryan style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> trying to, it's not working. <laughs> so Danny's used to using a Shalene Orion, which has, instead of a pitch yaw, it has a pitch roll. There's a shoulder roll function. And once you get used to them, they're very intuitive, but it takes a while to get driving back on the other side of the road again. So. Just, just careful of the plunger if you can. I'm not sure if you can do anything with it, but it is yeah, at the bottom, yeah. right there, yeah, on the you, off the blue you, and green guy. What he's saying is keep the plunger off the box while you're coming out of there. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Well, you I want know. me to have a go? I can get it out of there if you want. Just kind of in, in tight. What we call the armpit grab is challenging with this thing. Yes, because all my controls are not what they're supposed to be. What you're used to, I guess. There we go. Good smear. Yeah, sorry. I got a little western with it there just to oh. get the plunger off the corner and then dropped it. I see the other gas that in there has also lost its uh, safety. So. Yes, as, and it, we're obviously tangled up there. Can you rotate your wrist where that goes towards the center? There we go. There you go. Oh. Well, that one was a lot easier to take out. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you want to pan up. No, I'm going to have to go recover the other one there. Okay. Do you want me to bring the box in? Range to control, I'm about 500 meters from service. Copy, 500. You can turn that down if you want, Lynette. Uh, yeah, you can box in a bit there. Tool tray coming in. It's embarrassing. It's a nice spot. I don't want to just leave it there. These things are not uh, ROV friendly. 
<laughs> See, they seem more friendly than the um, isobarics. Yeah. Very brief watch change of video, a couple seconds. Fifty fifty whether I drop it again. You got this. I believe in you. Sorry, I'm te teasing the nav change over here. Let me know when you want the box out. Hmm. How about now? Coming out. Box all the way out. Roger. I'm going to adjust bubble for you. Yeah, not looking at that drunken bubble. Kills me. and try to rotate it, hook it on the edge. Yeah. Very nicely done. Of course, it's not going to stay there. Tool tray in? No, nope, I'm going to get the other one here. If possible, um, unfortunately, the way it's arranged is not great, but can we grab the second one from the front? Oh, sure. The one I can't see, you mean? Yeah, no the one problem. behind the monkey's fist. Roger. So that white and yellow, white and orange one is the, uh, it, it's got a slow close on it, so it's a little trickier one to take. So that'll, we're going to try and make that our last gas tank. Right. Do you want us to zoom in on that for you, Dan? Um, so you want the green one, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, any one other than the first one. Any one other than the first one. Uh, well, bubble. Show me what I need to see. Uh. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You don't need to zoom in. No, okay. <laughs> yep. There you go. Drunken bubble. Zoom in. It's not helping. I love T handles. Did I mention how I love T handles? About six times today. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I'm gonna find the guy that invented him in a dark alley. We're gonna have a discussion. I could think of someone who has used them religiously and throughout his entire career.
Should I start counting how many times you talk about tea handles? Sure. <laughs> we'll make a Grafana page. Right. <laughs> like, more data, please. <laughs> Megan, did you know what kind of crab that was that we were looking at earlier? I, I do. Um, I wrote it down because it was a long name. It's a deep sea <laughs> spider crab, and its name is Macrogeonia macrochyra. I couldn't even say that if I had it written in front of right. me. Right. <laughs> macro regiona macrochina. No. Spider Maybe. crab. Right. It was a very happy spider crab. Yeah, I saw it. I was like, the basket's been on the ground for what, like a couple minutes since yeah. already claimed it. So why do they, why, what attracts them? Why are they like the human smell. thinking? What, why do they want to like check stuff out? I don't know, because they're curious. Um, yeah, but what, they what attracts them? The smell, the sound, the vibration? Uh, it's probably all of those things. Uh, probably not the smell for this stuff. It I doesn't if it's the light. Could that be it? Um, yeah, they, they can see. Uh, so some animals are attracted by light, and other animals will be uh, deterred by a lot of light. Uh, but usually it's the sound and the vibration that the ROV makes that gets animals sort of curious, especially mm -hmm. the the larger um, animals. You know, if you're at the top of the food chain, you kind of are a little more forward about checking out new stuff uh, in your environment, whereas some of the, the smaller animals that are usually prey items uh, will actively avoid us. Okay, you want a box? But you know, in? those crabs, they, they have a lot of attitude, um, so. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they go for it. They're like, like it hey, what's they this? I like when defensive in posture. I don't know if that particular crab does. Well, I mean, we just had a Most battle Most crabs do do that defensive posturing. Um, that one was probably saying like, oh, there's some new stuff. Um, let's see if I want the new stuff. You know, first come, first serve in deep sea. Yeah. I'm just thinking about the okay. tamatoa. So, what's that? Tamatoa in the Moana movie has all the gold at the bottom of the sea. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> These are the trinkets. So, maybe that was one of Tamatoa's friends. I'm going to grab more shiny things. <laughs> shiny things. There, we do that? have a lot of shiny things. Yeah. You good with that? Or you want me to do it? Uh, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. Next is. That big blue bungee right there. But, 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 do we get rid of the, uh... So, we will, after we do the bars, we'll pick up that frame on the other side. So, I don't know if that, is it that now is a good time to put I'm that thinking, other gas stain in the I'm spot. thinking this milk crate and these other, uh, gas tanks here with all the, Cables running all over in front of us. Yep. Could yeah. Yeah. Time to. Uh, perfect time to jettison those. Get rid of those, and um, <clears throat> somebody needs to do some calculations on how much those weigh, how much the bars weigh, what bags we'll have to pick up and put down. Were you there when we picked up? Were you if on I was, shift I'd when they picked up it. the yellow? <laughs> the yellow bag is essentially empty. It's got. I think like only a couple pounds or so of, of bead bags in, of beads in there, Roger. so it's just an empty bag. Roger. Okay, Danny, I'm gonna move away, and we're gonna get rid of some stuff here, and then. Um, uh, do you want to drop the door on that no, box? No, I'm, I'm gonna. We won't put this in the tool basket right now. That'll be too much. Okay. It's pretty full there, so we're gonna. What <laughs> What I'm thinking is we move away, we get rid of the milk crate and oh. the. Uh, and the feeler gauge is there, and the empty yellow bag, and then we decide, then we have an empty porch, right? And then we decide, I think, I think, then we may or may not want the orange bag, and then we pick up the bars and uh, and go somewhere and do something with it. I think that's, does that, does that sound like a general plan? Sounds, sounds like a beautiful plan. Sounds good, you might have like to Rory. make a stop for another bead bag in between the deployment of the bars. If but yeah, Roger. there's some around. You don't have to go far to find one of those, except when you want one. Oh, um, oh. If you want, I can see it. Oh, you got it. I see it. I see it. 
Uh, ejecto, uh, Cedo, no craft off, craft off, craft off, please. I have no control, no control. Okay, I guess we'll just drop all this stuff right here. That's where we want to put that. Yeah, the ROV is... Like <laughs> Blue button, dude. I did. I did. <laughs> oh, it was quite reliant on those, huh? No control. Still no control. Sometimes you just have to use the force. Use the force. I'm willing the ROV to come back down. Mm -hmm. You're just going. Let's see what kind of a mess I just left. Uh, uh, we're dragging one of those up into the water yes column. Yes, we are. Yeah, that's an anchor. <laughs> it's stuck on the frame too. Yep. Oops. So at least you're not is. floating up. No, we're we're dragging the whole milk <laughs> basket. <laughs> is it Milkback's basket floating? Nah, it's caught up with the rest of the stuff there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, there it goes. Bye. See it's you gonna later. It's going to be up there for a while, I think. Well, it's, now it's caught on the ROV. Don't worry, it'll wind up in Oregon somewhere. <laughs> it hits straight up the digital steel lens. I hope it doesn't didn't scratch. <laughs> Did you get a picture? Maybe we'll see it on uh, Atlanta as it comes up. Come on, hurt. If you want me to secure anything, like your side or your... No, I'm, I'm completely dead stick except for 70% on the verts. So we'll get there. It's just, you know, a little slow. Yeah, sorry, I should have had you uh, secure the craft for it. I was, yeah, I was asking. So... It does appear that after you've used the craft, whatever is happening, uh, is more prevalent, because now I just barely touch it in them. It seems like we just bounced off the pressure relief valve, because it went to 3200 and then went down and like nothing. Yeah, so we're opening the relief valve there somehow. We definitely... At 3200, we definitely open it. That's 3250 relief valve. So maybe I let it bounce and then come back down. Maybe I have the pump set a little too hot. That's the problem. I think it's got a weak spring in the relief valve. We have the pump set too hot. We need to back it off. Yeah. New theory. So, in theory, let's test that theory. In theory, if I bang in and out of bypass with some thrust on, <coughs> look at that. No, maybe not. stuff where it's not in the basket. Don't we'll get tangled up with all the rest of it. I could reach over and unplug the uh, hockey puck. Well, then we'll continue to float. I need to... Yeah. What, what happened is we've, <coughs> when the milk crate came off, we're now too late, and I can't, I can't get back down to the seabed. 
Um, Even though we have one bars. Two. Yeah, interesting. We might have to go down and then hold. I cannot go down right now. Oh, I you can't, can't do okay. Anything. I have no control of the vehicle. Very little control. We can uh, put more power to your to your verts. Secure your horizontals. I'm uh, coming down now. Securing the craft valve actually made a difference, but I need to come back because I don't want to drop that gas tight into the basket. I don't know, maybe I do, but I think I don't. I'll get tangled up in all the other jewelry there. <laughs> to nothing. <laughs> Very late on the stick, I can... Okay, yeah. No, no, just send Megan or someone where she's done. Thank you. Is that a big steel plate in front of us? It's yeah. probably an Alvin stack. How much are one of those Alvin plates for weight? That's probably a stack pounds. there. <coughs> well, uh, it's the only Alvin a weights. single plate. Right, oh, we did we put ballast on the tool basket. That is actually one of our ballast plates. Yeah, that is, yeah. Uh oh, that. did we accidentally trigger one? No, it looks like it's the whole... It came from the tool basket. They rigged a few onto it. No, that's one of ours. Oh. I can see the stud sticking through it. That's what secures it to the porch. Oh, okay. I can reach out and grab it. So... I think the first thing I want to do is... Um, get rid of this... Uh, Let me just see if the ROV is going to play nice here. Uh, Dan, if we get close enough, we can grab a hold of that D-ring with the uh, mango. Anchor us to the ground so we can... Yeah, I like that idea. See if I can uh, hold it here while you put mango up. It's unlikely, but... I'm good. I don't think I could eat right now. I'll probably throw up. I'm fine for now. Do you think we would need someone to make you guys a plate for later? Please. Okay. Um, Danny and Dan, you want a plate made for you for no, later? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. Can I get a Zoom video? Roll your wrist to the left, Danny. Grab it with the small end of the wrist. Yeah. There you can see what you need to see in bubble. Oh. Look at bubble, man. <laughs> 